have a few weeks left of Friday Night Lights on WBFO as the high school basketball season starts to wind down in Western New York. But before we put a bow on the 2023-24 campaign, we may have the greatest gift of all. The final regular season game of Friday Night Lights may be the best this season. It's number one ranked Canisius hosting number two ranked Timon for a Monsignor Martin Association boys basketball bout. Hello friends, Jack Cruiser and PJ Cauley with you on WBFO 88.7, the WBFO app and WBFO.org and also on WNYAthletics.com. This is Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating and backup power. Timon, the reigning champs of the Monsignor Martin Association from a season ago, seek revenge for a mid-season loss to Canisius earlier this year with the Monsignor Martin regular season title on the line tonight. PJ, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, you know, these programs are among the top programs in New York State. We have two of the best coaches in New York State in Kyle Husband and Jason Rowe. And this is what these young men came to these schools for to play in a game like this at the end of the year with a lot on the line in front of a packed house. What could be better? Not much could be better than this. And well, I guess the only thing that could be better if there were more seats available for those standing along the baseline to our right as we welcome you courtside inside the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School in North Buffalo. The Crusaders host the Time and Tigers. This is the second meeting between the two teams this year, but there is a little more than just another basketball game on the line tonight. As the senior for Bishop Timon St. Jude, Jaden Harrison, eyes down the Western New York all-time scoring record as he currently sits second all-time at 2,361 points just 16 points away from breaking Dominic Welch's record of 2,376, which was set back in 2017. P.J., when a player like Jaden Harrison has the opportunity to do something everlasting and, and so impactful in the Western New York community and etch his name into the history books, do you think it adds a little more pressure in a game that also means so much in terms of standing? Well, it could if he didn't have such an outstanding mentor and, and head coach Jason Rowe. Uh, the thing that's most impressive to me about Jaden Harrison is he's a team guy. Obviously, he's put up huge numbers in terms of points. But as Coach Rowe alluded to when we met him at practice yesterday, he's all about the team and always saying to the coach, what can I do better for us? And I think that'll be his focus. And when you do that, it takes pressure off of that number that's out there. Jaden Harrison needs 16. We'll keep you, of course, updated on that as the night progresses. But know that Jaden Harrison averages 21 points a game and comes off a 22-point performance in a win for Bishop Timon over St. Francis two nights ago. Let's dive into the Canisius Crusaders. They're ranked number one in Western New York as the teams make their way out for warm-ups inside the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse. Canisius is ranked number one, and for good reason. They're 20 and two overall and have not lost to a Western New York opponent all season. They are a perfect 12 and 0 in the Monsignor Martin Association, but there isn't really a star player on this Canisius roster. It's all about team, 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 and system. Uh, they're excellent offensively in terms of their execution and getting easy shots for those number of fellas that can make them. The Benzers, Purdy, Esposito, Cullinan, uh, the list goes on and on for uh, the Crusaders. They run Coach Kyle Husband's uh, system outstanding and they make few mistakes. That's why their record looks like it does. The two losses that Canisius suffered this season came way back in December. Currently on a 15 winning streak are the Canisius Crusaders. Their losses came both at the Cookie Garcia Jesuit Invitational in Tampa, Florida during the holiday break on the 27th and 28th of December. The Crusaders lost back-to-back -back games 80-23. to They were beat by St. Ignatius. And then the following day, a buzzer beater, half-court heave for a player from Jesuit of New Orleans defeated Canisius 
to 65. When we spoke to Kyle Husband, coach of the Crusaders earlier this season, when we had their game uh, earlier at St. Joe's this year, Coach Husband mentioned that that team in St. Ignatius had about eight different Division I athletes on it, and the team from Louisiana was equally as talented, but it clearly made them better. Certainly, that's why they go to these kinds of events. To play that caliber of team and athlete always makes you better, and it pays dividends at this time of the year. In the game earlier this season against Bishop Time, in which Canisius won 77 to 75 on January the 26th, four players for Canisius scored in double digits, but no one in the game scored more than the junior Patrick Cullinan, who started the season on the injured list, not being able to play. Young Patrick Cullinan showed up against the Tigers on the road, dropped 20 points, and led his team with seven rebounds, four assists, and two steals. Patrick Cullinan certainly will be one player that Timon looks to shut down, but like we mentioned, that's not it. Yeah, you have to shut down the system. And Coach Rowe alluded to it uh, last night when we spoke with him. You have to do such a sound, fundamental job against the Canisius Crusaders in every aspect of your game to have a chance at the end. And that's going to be the challenge for the Tigers tonight. We will step aside for a quick moment. But first, we remind you that Friday Night Lights is presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. Friday Night Lights is supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of the community, and by Miracle Method, refinishes your ugly bathroom's Miracle Method, and by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region, and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. Friday Night Lights is a joint presentation of Buffalo Toronto Public Media Sports and Western New York Athletics. When we come back, we'll dive into the number two ranked team in Western New York, the Bishop Time and St. Jude Tigers, who are on the floor warming up to our left, the Crusaders to our right. We'll continue to get you set for Friday Night Lights on WBFO and WNY Athletics after this on the radio home of high school sports, WBFO. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com or leave us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School. Number one, Canisius hosts number two, Timon, in a Monsignor Martin Association battle, a rematch of a game for the season, which Canisius won 77 to 75 earlier this year. Jack Cruiser and PJ Cauley with you on Friday Night Lights on WBFO and WNY Athletics. We mentioned Timon and the historic season that they had a year ago in which they went 24 and 4 losing just two games to Monsignor Martin opponents last season the Tigers went on to win the Monsignor Martin regular season and postseason titles for the first time under seventh year head coach Jason Rowe when you have so much success with a lot of players returning the next season the expectation seems almost too high to reach, P.J. It does, but that's part of their culture that's been established by Coach, Coach Rowe. Coach Rowe has developed a brotherhood among these young people, and there's a standard that they must meet with their practice effort, with the way they treat one another, with the way they play the game, and that's how he handles those expectations. 
So the expectations from the outside might be one thing. They have their own expectations inside. Only losing two games all season have the Time and Tigers. 20 and 2 overall. Same record as their opponent tonight, Canisius. But the difference is that both of Timon's losses this year were to Monsignor Martin Association opponents. The aforementioned two point loss at home against Canisius. And then less than a week later, in fact, just three days later, the Time and Tigers lost at St. Joe's by 9, 69 to 60 at the end of January. But Coach Rowe didn't seem too upset with that patch of their season. No, it's a learning experience, and, and, and in the end, it should benefit them. Remember, we're playing tonight. If Canisius wins, they are the Monsignor Martin regular season champs. But don't forget, they play St. Joe's Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon. They're going to have to win that game should they lose tonight. If they lose both, Timon is the regular season champs, and that's a wonderful honor. But both these teams have bigger things on their minds, okay? And that's those playoff situations. So really, we're playing for that, but we're also playing for that playoff seating as we go to the Monsignor Martin Championship and the right to represent Western New York in the state playoffs. This may sound like a novice question, but when you've got a tournament that's held at a neutral site like the Monsignor Martin Association Championship is, how much does being the one seed versus the two seed really mean? Well, you know, uh, whoever's the one of the two is going to have a very difficult semifinal game. You're talking about teams like Nichols. You're talking about a growing and developing St. Joe's team. And don't forget St. Francis. St. Francis has some excellent athletes on that team. And if they gel on the right night, they're a handful. They certainly were a handful on Wednesday for Bishop Timon, at least in the first half. Timon ended up winning the fourth quarter by nine points, which led to a 13-point win. But until the final eight minutes, St. Francis down in Athol Springs was playing pretty well against the number two ranked Timon Tigers in Western New York. When we look at Timon, we already talked about Jaden Harrison and how impressive he has been throughout his now five-year career, starting at West Seneca East as an eighth and ninth grader and the last three seasons at Bishop Timon St. Jude, just 16 points away from breaking Dominic Welch's Western New York scoring record, which was set last decade. But there's two other heads on the three-headed monster that is the Timon Tigers basketball team, Jacob Humphrey and Nakai Harris, both average 18 plus points per game leading to all three of them combining for about 60 points a night well the three amigos yeah you know uh, and they all bring a little different aspect of the game to the time and tigers you know humphrey is a penetrator he's really good at getting to the basket and finishing on his own or creating for his from his teammates Nakai Harris, his father, Paul Harris, I told you at one time, one of the most instinctive athletes that I've come across in my over 30 years in Western New York. And you see some of that in Nakai's game that he has from his father. Double doubles in many games this year. He's going to do it at the offensive end. He's going to rebound the basketball. So, yeah, it's the three amigos. But as coach, as coach Jason Rowe alluded to to us, He's also very happy with the play of his players that are, he calls his glue guys. Players like Mike Gibson and Aaron Hicks, who are not maybe going to wow you in terms of the statistics, but they play and do the little, the little things necessary to make the whole team go. Timon and Canisius tonight, just after 7 p.m. was the slotted tip-off time, but the beauty of private schools playing in Western New York is that you not only have the varsity and the JV team, but the freshman team as well. So tonight, a triple header. This, of course, is the nightcap, but we had the freshman teams play and then the JVs, which Canisius won just moments ago. And we continue to prepare you for the varsity matchup of the two top-ranked teams in Western New York. Such a different environment. I don't want to say for better or worse between a private school matchup like this within league play and a public school one when you've got the players that you can in recruit, in essence, at the private school level. Timon and Canisius and their head coaches, Jason Rowe and Kyle Husband, respectively, have done uh, put on a master class of recruiting throughout their time. And they have great respect for one another in their programs. 
both coaches alluded to the fact that it's a great challenge going up against the other and uh, that's what you need you need the, the, in the Monsignor Martin the one thing about these rivalries Jack is they've been going on for almost a hundred years in the public schools. sometimes our divisions change mm. not here in the private schools you know this this is a long-standing uh, rivalry uh, that's been uh, unbelievable and has had so many unbelievable games and we just hope we are fortunate enough to see one here tonight 32 Monsignor Martin Association championships in the postseason for Canisius. All of those numbers hang on a banner going back to 1949 to our left at the baseline, which Timon warms up in front of. Both teams wearing white over shirts as they shoot around as everyone kind of starts to feel that energy of a big time bout between two of Western New York's giants. You can feel the energy. It's going to be one heck of a night. Friday Night Lights, supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of the community and by Miracle Method. Miracle Method refinishes ugly bathrooms and by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. We are officially sold out at Canisius High School and Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse. If you're listening in your vehicle on your way here, there's no more standing room available. They have officially sold out the Fieldhouse. What a night we are in for, PJ. Well, maybe some folks will uh, find a watering hole and listen to us, Jack. Hey, why not? Wherever you may be listening on the WBFO app, WBFO.org or WBFO 88.7, we also invite you to listen in and watch along as WNYathletics.com produces our video live stream tonight, which we will include a spotlight camera on Jaden Harrison as he is just 16 points away from breaking the Western New York scoring record. We will take a break on our pregame show, getting ready for Friday Night Lights, final week of the regular season. It's number one ranked Canisius and number two ranked Bishop Timon St. Jude. Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power continues with tip-off after this on WBFO, your home for high school sports. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Welcome back to North Buffalo and the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School in front of a sold-out crowd. The number one-ranked Canisius Crusaders host the number two-ranked Time and Tigers in what should be one of the best high school basketball games. At least the anticipation is there for what could be one of the best that we could see all season long. And there is still a very good chance that these two teams may meet once more in the postseason in just a week and a half's time. Jack Cruiser and P.J. Cauley with you on WBFO and WNY Athletics. Canisius and time. And let's get to our keys to the game Presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services. Keys to the game, PJ, for the visiting number two ranked time in Tigers. What do they have to do? Well, they want to get the tempo going and get the three amigos, Jacob Humphrey, Jaden Harris, and Nakai Harris, get them going, get them the ball in spots where they can do damage. The other thing they want to do is they want to be aggressive against Canisius defensively without foul trouble. They, if they get into foul trouble and they got to go deep into their bench, that could be a problem. How about for the number one ranked Canisius Crusaders who have won 15 straight? Well, obviously the first thing is they have to limit the three amigos. Mm. You know, you want to make them work. They're good. You're not going to stop them. 
they're too good of players, but you want to make them really have to work and work overtime to get theirs. And the second thing is to play the Kinesis system. Just keep grinding away at the Kinesis system. That's the key for the Crusaders. Let's get to our spotlight players briefly before we take one final break for our pregame show and then bring you back for tip-off between Canisius and time. And once more, Friday Night Lights, supported by our members and Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of the community by Miracle Method, refinishing ugly bathrooms by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region and Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. Jaden Harrison is our clear spotlight player. In fact, Dana Gunther has our spotlight camera on him tonight on WNYAthletics.com, 16 points away from breaking the Western New York scoring record. He is our spotlight player for Bishop Timon, and it's the man who led his team in the first meeting between these two. For Canisius, Patrick Cullinan, who comes off an injury again, did not play last game for the Crusaders. He is back in the lineup tonight. He put 20 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and two steals up in the first meeting between these two back on January the 26th, which ended up a 77 to 75 Canisius victory. We take one final break on WBFO and WNY Athletics as we'll bring you back with tip-off between number one ranked Canisius and number two ranked Bishop Time in St. Jude here on the radio home for high school sports, WBFO. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ComfortBlastics.com or like us on Facebook. It's a late night in February on the north side of Buffalo. This Friday evening, while it may be chilly outside, there's a feeling of anticipation that has built throughout the course of a school day, a basketball season, and a young man's career through high school athletics. On the heels of a historic Monsignor Martin Championship last season, number two ranked Bishop Timon sits at 20 and two overall under seventh year head coach Jason Rowe with history again in sight, this time for their senior guard, Jaden Harrison, who eyes down the all-time Western New York career scoring record. Just 16 points away from breaking it, Harrison and the Tigers look for revenge against Canisius for a buzzer-beating loss earlier this season. Canisius is a balanced squad with no clear star attacker. Under head coach Kyle Husband in his 20th season at the helm, the Crusaders have yet to lose to a Western New York opponent all season with a 20 and two overall record as well. A win tonight would clinch the Monsignor Martin regular season title for number one ranked Canisius and would complete the regular season sweep 
of Timon. It's number one ranked Canisius hosting number two Timon live from the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School in Buffalo. It's the final Friday Night Lights of the regular season in Western New York for the 2024 campaign. Friday Night Lights is presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. Friday Night Lights is supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of the community, and by Miracle Method. Miracle Method refinishes ugly bathrooms, and by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region, and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. Friday Night Lights is a joint presentation of Buffalo Toronto Public Media Sports and Western New York Athletics. Bishop Timon wears their visiting all black uniforms with green numerals and gold trim with gold Timon across the front, while the number one ranked Crusaders wear their home white uniforms top and bottoms with gold and navy blue trim, gold Canisius across the Crusaders' chest. Timon attacks the basket to our left and Canisius to our right for the opening quarter. Jack Cruiser and P.J. Cauley with you on WBFO and WNY Athletics for the most anticipated game of the 2023-24 high school basketball season in Western New York. Buckle up. We're ready for tip-off between Canisius and Timon. Pat Benzer wins the tip for the Canisius Crusaders who start on offense attacking to our right. Jaden Clark, the star wide receiver on the football team, back in the lineup for the Crusaders after missing some time in the middle of this season. He has it on the right wing into the corner for the 6'6 forward Benzer who can shoot from outside. Benzer receives the handoff from Esposito to the far wing, Mark McDonald for the Crusaders atop the key. Benzer, handoff Esposito, beats his defender, extra pass to the wing. Three for Benzer is off into the left, an air ball that's caught by the hands of Mike Gibson of Timon. Great energy, great energy by the Tigers defensively. Very, very sound. They've come from South Buffalo with a lot of energy here tonight. Timon with their first look offensively. And Nakai Harris, the son of former Syracuse Orangeman, Paul Harris on the floor for Bishop Timon. Jaden Harrison. Drives the middle of the lane, up with the right-handed finger roll, it drops. 2-0 time in, a minute into play from Canisius High School. Harrison has two. Johnny Esposito got the call on Harrison there defensively and couldn't contain him. Gets all the way to the basket. Canisius is Mark McDonald. Turnaround Jay at the left short corner, drops. McDonald, the glue guy there, gets, a, gets one to go early. That'll be big for his confidence. Mark McDonald, the son of Damon head coach Mike McDonald at the Division II level. 2-2 Two -two game, 6.40 to go in the first. An errant pass rolls all the way out of bounds as Timon controlled at the baseline, looking to reset up top. It missed everybody. Canisius ball tied at two with 6.37 to go in the first. Good rotation by the Canisius defense. Forced that turnover by Nakai Harris. Johnny Esposito who has been impressive this season despite averaging just seven points a game. To the left wing, Purdy inside, left elbow jumper good for McDonald. Four points for Mark McDonald, four for the Crusaders, and their first lead on the day, it's 4-2. McDonald can pick up the scoring load if needed in a ball game like this, he's two for two. Harris on the near wing to Harrison. Dribbles between his legs. Three from the left wing, off the back of the iron. Rebound to the far side, offensively grabbed by Gibson and ripped away from him by Jaden Clark of Canisius. That's that athleticism Clark brings to the table, ripping that rebound out of the hands of number 13, Mike Gibson. Clark missed six of the 22 games for Canisius this season partly because he was being recruited by so many Division I teams for football. Clark, spin move through the lane, extra pass, near corner three for Purdy. Strong off front iron, rebound tipped by Benzer and corralled by Timons Gibson. Up the floor on the far side, Jacob Humphrey knives through the lane, lays it up with the right hand and gets it to fall off the window. 4-4. That, that's what he's best at, getting to the rim. Jacob Humphrey from Cheektowaga, New York, on the board with his first bucket of the day. A tip pass from Benzer inside the lane is stolen away by Timon. 
and Nick Fisher, the 6'4 centerman. Fisher, another one of those glue guys, making the, making the greasy plays for his teammates. Jaden Harrison at the right arc, drives middle of the lane, dished to the baseline, ball is loose, tipped in the lane and corralled by Purdy of Canisius. Cuts through the middle of the lane, up with the right in transition, and Nick Purdy lays it in for two. Great job by Purdy, recognizing that alley there and getting all the way to the rack. Purdy averages 16 a game. That is a team high for the Canisius Crusaders. 6-4, the home team is up. Number one ranked Canisius. Deep three from the right arc, good for Nakai Harris. First points on the day from the Sweet Home native. That'll get his confidence going here in a game like this. Look out if he gets hot. 7-6, time and leads Canisius halfway through the first quarter. Across the three-point line, Canisius tried to swing it to the far wing in front of the time and bench. Coach Jason Rowe tugs on his shirt as it goes out of bounds off of Canisius. Time and ball. The student section fills an entire section to the right of the bleachers behind the time and bench, all wearing black as well. Timons, Damian Johnson comes off the bench to replace Fisher. Guard in for the forward. On the right wing, Harrison, already with two. Pulls a three from the corner, it is strong. Rebound into the lane, tipped by Purdy and hauled in by Jaden Clark. Near wing, Benzer for Canisius, down by one. Spin move at the baseline as it tipped away from him and corralled by Timons Johnson. In transition, left corner, fake of the shot and a drive of the baseline for Harris. Draws a foul against Clark, who retreated back for Canisius. Steal was made by a substitution, Damian Johnson, the 5'10 guard, come in for Timon and make a defensive play right away. That's what you need from your bench in a ball game like this. Come in and make a difference. Canisius' Kyle Husband makes a change as well. Alex Hayes in, Pat Benzer out. Off the baseline, out of bounds play. Gibson is denied inside the lane for Timon. A block from Mark McDonald. Down the near wing, Clark into the corner. Hayes slows up the offense for Canisius. In their home white uniforms, McDonald slows up atop the key and finds young Patrick Cullinan. Nine points a game this season. Cullinan picks up his dribble to the near wing. Three on the way for Hayes, off front iron, rebound tipped by Humphrey and taken by the Tigers. Up the floor, Harris rises up and draws a foul as he went up with the left hand. He got contact from a Canisius Crusader. Harris will go to the strike. What we're seeing early here, Jack, is Timon's intensity and quickness on defense is forcing Canisius back towards half court and out towards the sidelines. They're gonna have to figure some ways to get more inside the time in defense. First free throw on the day for time and is around and out to the left. Nakai Harris misses the front end of two shots. Changes for both teams as Pat Cullinan heads out. In his place comes the 6-4 Patrick Enright for Canisius. Gibson heads out for time and Aaron Hicks, the 6-1 junior, in his place. Second free throw good for Nakai Harris. Per perhaps Coach Husband's figuring putting Patrick Enright in here can get inside of this aggressive Time and Tigers defense. Time and well out beyond the arc. Jacob Humphrey guards the Canisius guards. Pat Cullinan at the Crusaders logo to his left, picks up his dribble. Time and up by two at the free throw line. Outside to the left wing, Purdy's three, around and out. Offensive rebound and right. Off the bench, he makes an impact. Jaden Clark. Ball above his head, drives to the corner. Double team comes for Timon. Float to the baseline. <laughs> Hayes back up top for Clark to the left wing. Drive of the lane. Cullinan lays it up and in off the glass. 8-8, eight, eight. we are tied with two and a half to go in the first. The way Timon's playing defense, I think Patrick Cullinan has to look for opportunities to drive to the basket. Aaron Hicks on the near wing. Shorter haircut than his Timon Tiger teammates. Atop the key, Harrison fought, faked the drive. Purdy closed it out. Humphrey with a crossover move. Drive through the lane, up with the left. Oh, and the finish as he fell to the baseline. Jacob Humphrey's second bucket of the day. Boy, he can get into tough spots and make shots, can he? 10-8 time in leads. Enright's pass from the paint to the far wing is caught by Cullinan. Back inside Enright. Back out to Cullinan. His three is good. 11-10, Canisius takes the lead right back. 
We only played a few minutes, Jack, but this is going to be something, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Every possession feels like it means that much more. A minute and a half to go in the first. Jump stop through the lane for Hicks, out to the left side. Humphrey had it tipped away. He recovers the pass. And then a foul is called as Jaden Clark was defending Jacob Humphrey real well, but not well, according to Michael O'Brien, the official who made the call for the third Canisius foul this quarter, second against Jaden Clark. Yes, and he's got to go to the bench, and he adds the athleticism to perhaps defend the basket against these outstanding athletes time and has. Entry pass into the lane, corralled by Harris, but immediately tied up as Johnny Esposito reached his hands in. Possession stays with Timon, but the arrow will flip with a minute 28 to go in the first quarter. 11-10, Canisius leads. Timon at the baseline, floats it in atop the key. Harrison directs the traffic as he keeps the ball under his right arm, now starts his dribble. At the center court stripe, he fakes the handoff to Humphrey. In front of the Canisius bench, Harrison drives on two. Extra pass outside. Humphrey's three. Bottoms. 13-11. Time and leads. Humphrey's got it going here, and he's the quickest player on the floor. Purdy drives and kicks for Canisius. Right elbow, Esposito. Far corner, Hayes. Pump fakes the three, gets his defender to jump. Timon's defense scrambling. Near side wing three for Purdy. Strong off the iron. Defensive rebound on the weak side for Timon's Humphrey. Eyes up the floor, he crosses up, pulls the three at the arc. Off front iron, it tips off the window and front iron again. Nick Purdy's there for Canisius to corral the loose rebound. Th through the lane, Purdy tried to dish down low to Esposito in transition but a foul is called against Timon. That is their first of the game. Damian Johnson picks up the foul against number two ranked Timon. 42 think, seconds to go in the first. I think the pace of the game favors Timon right now. Patrick Cullinan atop the key. Ball above his head, guarded tightly by Johnson, who claps as Cullinan gets rid of it. To the far corner, Hayes, down by two for Canisius. To the near wing, Esposito fakes the drive. Still ball handles outside the keys, tipped away by Humphrey. Esposito corrals it and feeds to the corner for Purdy. Ten to shoot inside the lane. Hayes, turnaround jumper from five feet. Good. Hayes on the board for the first time tonight. Ties the game at 13. Ten Hayes, seconds to go in the quarter. Hayes always makes plays when we watch Canisius when Coach Husband brings him off the bench. Humphrey drives and kicks. Harris at the left wing. Step around three. Good at the buzzer. Timon takes a three-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Nakai Harris with seven of Timon's 16. How's that for entertainment? <laughs> we'll have more of it. After this, on WBFO and WNY Athletics. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics. A believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplaces.com or like us on Facebook. Welcome back to Canisius High School. Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. We are underway with the second quarter. Canisius, the first possession, attacking the basket to our right. Cullinan, who has five points already for the Crusaders, controls the point. Benzer back on the floor for the Crusaders. Gets it in the paint. A heavy dribble with two hands. Turns to the basket around Harris and draws a foul. Great set play by Coach Husband there. Getting the ball to the basket. Pat Benzer will shoot two as that fouls on to Kai Harris. First foul against Harris of Timon. Pat Benzer, who averages 12 points a game, 
for Canisius, second on the team, sinks the first free throw. His first points on the day, 14 points now for Canisius. They trail Timon by two, 16-14, awaiting the second Benzer free throw. In the first meeting between these two, Benzer had 18 points in the two-point win for Canisius earlier this season. Benzer hits the second free throw, cutting the deficit down to one point for Canisius. Ball is tipped away from Humphrey. He breaks away in transition. Humphrey with a head full of steam and the smooth finish with the left hand. Extends Timon's lead 18-15. Coach Husband went to a little tempo pressure to slow the game down a little bit, but with Jacob Humphrey, it's hard to slow him. Near wing, Benzer for Canisius. Pass to the baseline. Esposito has his pocket picked by Harris and then falls, does Harris, up the near sideline. He lost control of the basketball. Out of bounds, Canisius gets possession. Canisius with a full shot clock and 7-10 to go in the first half. Trail by three. Esposito to Purdy, high atop the arc to the near wing, Benzer. Purdy flashes to the middle, gets the pass from Benzer, up and around Hicks, he lays it strong, rebound offensively grabbed by Purdy, put back good and the foul. Nick Purdy, just his second field goal on the day, he has a chance to add a free throw. Nick Purdy just would not be denied there, good movement, ball swung, there was a screen from the weak side, got Purdy free and he's standing at the free throw line for an old fashioned three point play. He misses it off front iron. Benzer tips the rebound out of bounds at the baseline, painted in navy blue, time and ball. Here's the pressure from Canisius, designed to slow time and down, but don't let number one get into a gap. Humphrey straight away finds the gap, dishes to the near corner with a whip. It's caught by Harris. He kicks up top, three for Nakai, around and out. Defensive rebound, Purdy. Across the floor, McDonald crosses the timeline to Benzer, who beats his man. Short corner jumper, good. Pat Benzer looks to his left where the cheerleaders shake their pom-poms in celebration, giving Canisius a one-point lead, 19-18. He's another guy, can get hot for Canisius, put up points quickly. Nakai Harris to Jacob Humphrey on the far side. Nine points for Humphrey, leads all Tigers so far. Corner three for Harrison, off front iron, off the shot clock, that is out of bounds. Canisius ball, we are on Jaden Harrison watch. He has just two points so far this game, averaging 21 a contest this season. He's just gotta let the game come to him. He's forcing it a little bit here. He'll calm down and let the game come to him. Canisius inbounds from their own baseline in front of a sellout crowd at the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School. Purdy hunches over. Picks up his dribble atop the key to the near wing, Benzer. Back up top for Purdy, who pushes with his right hand to signal the offensive call. Purdy drives up and over Gibson. He draws a foul. Right of the lane, Purdy attacked number 13 in black, and that is the first foul against Mike Gibson, the third against time in this quarter. You know, the thing that's always impress impressive about Canisius is they don't lose their composure, they keep their poise, and they keep grinding. Purdy hits the first free throw. He's another guy who's put up numbers when we've seen them, Nick Purdy. Averages 16 a game, six rebounds as well as a team high and shoots 80% from the stripe. Purdy hits both free throw attempts, giving Canisius a 21-18 lead, 5.45 to go in the first half from Canisius High School. Humphrey slows down and looks to his right where head coach Jason Rowe in his seventh season calls out the offensive play. Gibson with a pass to Harrison atop the key, was nearly poked away, and it was by Esposito, recovered by Harrison. He drives and kicks to the left wing. Up top, Humphrey has space on Purdy, crosses him up, drives to the baseline, turnaround floater, good! Jacob Humphrey with the spin move of a century. 21-20, Canisius up by just one. He's got a lot of game, Jacob Humphrey. A steal for Harrison, up the floor in transition. Timon finds Harris, back up top for Harrison. A jump stop and a move to the lane. Harrison draws a foul on Canisius. 
there's what he's got to do. Look to get to the basket, get to the rim. At worst, you're standing on the free throw line. Helps you to establish your rhythm. It's Benzer's first personal and the first against Canisius in this second quarter. Jaden Harrison, when it comes to communicating with Coach Rowe, all he needs is to look at him, and he understands all that the former Buffalo International player has to say. What a, what a mentor and role model all these Time and Tigers have in Coach Jason Rowe, but especially the guards. What a player he was. Harrison hits the first and the second, perfect as well. Four points for Jaden Harrison, now 12 away from history. Under five to go in the first half, 22-21, time and leads, and a nasty block from Harrison as he denies Alex Hayes in transition. Humphrey up and one! Jacob Humphrey end-to-end -end for Timon, took a seat on his black shorts. He steps up with a flex after dropping it in with a Cirque du Soleil shot. 24-21, Timon leads with 4.47 to go in the first half. His quickness is really creating problems for the Crusaders' defense. He's so elusive, and he can get into little tiny cracks and get to the basket. Old-fashioned three-point play. 14 points for Jacob Humphrey is a game high. Timon leads 25-21. 4.40 to go in the first half. Benzer tucks it under his left arm, switches to his right as he drives down the paint and lays it in from the left side. Canisius cuts the deficit down to two. Humphrey on the near wing, crosses between his legs, goes between three, stop, outside, three for Hicks, off front iron, offensive rebound Hicks, and then he lost control as he fell to the floor out of bounds signals Jamal Carter, the official who had it happen right in front of him at the baseline. 4.15 to go in the first half, 25-23, Timon leads Canisius. Esposito on the far wing in front of the Timon bench. Purdy gets the handoff, guarded by his numeral counterpart, Harris. He tries to drive and kick to McDonald in the far corner, but before the pass, and the shot, a foul is called against Timon. That's two on Nakai Harris. He was in good position, but elected to put his hand on the waist of Mark McDonald, and it yielded a foul. Four fouls on Timon with the new NFHS rules. One more will send Canisius to the stripe for the next four minutes and three seconds of time in the first half. Coach Rowe has a conversation after the whistle with Jamal Carter, the official. Jamal leaves the baseline and walks to the time and bench to have a conversation with the head coach, Jason Rowe, wearing the green quarter zip. Canisius ball, down by two, Purdy. Up top, McDonald to the near wing, Benzer. The 6'6 six, six forward, floats it inside, rejected by Hicks. It's tapped all the way back to the Canisius backcourt. 15 to shoot for Esposito, who crosses the timeline, nearly at his pocket, picked by Harris but it deflects off of Nakai Harris and out of bounds at the scorer's table. Jason Rowe now has a word with Michael O'Brien, the official. Michael O'Brien, former point guard, North uh, Tonawanda High School, Buffalo State College, outstanding player. 3.40 to go in the first half. Esposito to the near wing, Benzer. Offensive movement away from the ball for Canisius. Purdy drives from the left wing, running floater from the short corner, is strong off the rim twice. Defensive rebound, Harrison. Through transition, Timons Harrison finds Humphrey for three. Good! Jacob Humphrey, another three on the day. 28-23, Timon. He's feeling it, and the Tigers recognize it, and they're getting him the ball. They just forced a turnover here. Momentum wearing black and green. Esposito down the near sideline had it tipped away from him and off of him out of bounds on the near wing. The time in student section jeers the home squad as number two ranked Timon seeks revenge for an early season two point loss which they took at home in January. Up by five, Timon starts the offense. With Harrison's three from the left wing, off back iron, offensive rebound, but a foul called on Mike Gibson, his second, team's fifth. That gives Canisius the ball. Mike Gibson pushed off there for that offensive rebound. I'd like to see Jaden Harrison on the next possession get to the basket again. 
I think he's, he's shooting from the outside, not necessarily irresponsible threes, but a little quick. Let the game come, let the action come to you, and see if you can get to the basket. 17 points for Jacob Humphrey so far is a game high for Timon. When we spoke to Coach Rowe on the trio, he said they get their buckets in the flow of the game. There's not offensive sets called for individuals. They just happen to all average 20 points a contest. Well, they can, they can all not only score, but create by getting to the lane for their teammates. And boy, they just have a little sixth sense about where each other is through all the time spent working together. Pat Benzer hits the first. Timon makes a change as Gibson heads out. In his place comes Joey and Sarah. The 6'2 sophomore forward from Notre Dame Academy Grammar School gets some playing time with under three minutes to go in the first half. Catch and shoot three. Good for Humphrey in the corner. Oh, Jacob Humphrey is on fire at Canisius. 31-25 Timon. Clark and Duane rejected down low. Humphrey comes away with it for Timon. End to end, Timon crossover behind his back. On the floor, he spins away from pressure. Timon high flying into the corner in Sierra to the middle of the lane. Harrison drives and loses possession. Loose ball kicked. That's the reason for a whistle from Michael O'Brien. Against Timon is the kick ball called Canisius ball. Pat Cullinan back into the game for Canisius. Alex Hayes heads out. Well, we said at the beginning, one of the keys for the Tigers was to create the tempo. Jacob Humphrey's doing it by himself. The tempo favors Timon. They just can't get into foul trouble here against these very dangerous Crusaders. Near corner three for Benzer off front iron. It rises up and touches the shot clock above the basket, which was full of time on that possession for Canisius at the time of the shot, time and ball. Leading 31-25 with 2.10 to go in the first half. Nakai Harris with seven points today, playing with two fouls to the far wing, Humphrey. Pulls a logo three, it's short and air ball, caught by Nick Purdy of Canisius. Up the floor to the corner, Clark back up top, Benzer wide open three. Misses to the right, off the iron, offensive rebound, Purdy. His putback is short, another offensive rebound of the near wing, Cullinan. Benzer atop the key, shakes away from Harris. To the near wing, Purdy with a reset shot clock, drives and kicks. Clark does the same, he drives, goes up with the left and draws a foul as Jaden Clark weaves his way past the baseline between the Canisius cheerleaders. Clark will go to the stripe as Timon already has five fouls against them. That foul's called on Jacob Humphrey, only his first. I would be remiss if I, I made a mistake. Mike O'Brien played for Ken Maurice and le legendary coach Marv Madison. Mm. His brother Eric O'Brien, the coach for Niagara Wheatfield, played for North Tonawanda High School. Jaden Clark misses the first. Clark was off on unofficial visits, went to Penn State <laughs> for football. I believe I saw him at West Virginia as well. Jaden Clark, just a junior, misses the first free throw but makes the second to cut the deficit down to five. 31-26 with 96 seconds to play in the second quarter. Clark heads out into the game for Canisius comes the senior Clarence Funderburg. He's another guy has done a nice job when he's called upon by Coach Husband. He's charged with the unenviable task of guarding Jacob Humphrey. Humphrey has 20 already with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Harrison with just four points today, drives through the lane past and right, kick to the corner, three for Humphrey, off back iron, defensive rebound Esposito of Canisius. Full court press on for Timon, nearly poked away from Esposito, he controls. Up the floor, Benzer's layup from the right side is good, and he lets Ensira know that he's too little in celebration. Benz are starting to become involved offensively for the Crusaders. That's key for Coach Husband. 31-28, time and leads. Harrison down low, easy layup through contact. Harrison now with six. Time and up 33-28. Timeout, Kyle Husband of Canisius. That's that layup where we were talking about. Jaden Harrison converts there, but he went to the basket the previous possession and found Humphrey in the corner. Humphrey missed. I think it's the only one he missed all night. 
but that's unselfishness. That's, you know, some folks always, you know, the, the, the points are wonderful, but what you see is a complete ball player. Friday Night Lights is supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of our members and the community, and by Miracle Method. Miracle Method refinishes ugly bathrooms, and by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region, and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. 49 seconds to go in the first half. Time and leads Canisius 33-28. to 28. The number one ranked Canisius Crusaders have the possession from their own baseline. Now let's look at the chess match. Will Coach Husband have something drawn up after that timeout? Well, Coach Rowe changed his defense, little zone trap. Cullinan's right-handed floater from the right short corner drops for Canisius, cutting the deficit down to one possession. Cullinan now with seven on the day. 33-30 time and leads, 30 seconds to go in the half. Shot clock is just a few seconds shorter. Harrison drives and spins. Dish down low in Sierra's layup is good. Unselfishness, Jaden Harrison gets his buddy in Sierra involved. And Sierra averages just three points a game. That's his first bucket of the day. 10 seconds to go. Canisius down by five as we wind down the first half. Cullinan, who hit a game winner at Nichols earlier this year. To the left, Benzer's three, off to the right. Rebound tipped by Clark and Harrison out of bounds as the buzzer sounds. 35-30, time and leads Canisius after one half of play. It's the number two ranked Tigers who lead the number one ranked Crusaders. We will break it all down and look forward to the second half as we take a break. First, before we head to our break, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WBFO 88.7 FM, your home for high school sports. It is halftime between Canisius and Timon. The number two ranked Tigers lead the number one ranked Crusaders 35 to 30. We will take a break and come back with halftime after this on the radio home of high school sports, WBFO. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com or link us on Facebook. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be.
It's halftime at Canisius High School. Welcome back to Friday Night Lights, presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. Number one ranked Canisius trails number two ranked Timon through 16 minutes of basketball. It is the Tigers of Timon who lead Canisius 35 to 30 at the break. Jack Cruiser and PJ Cauley with you on WBFO, your home for high school sports, and WNYAthletics.com, wherever you may be listening. We are on Jaden Harrison watch as he entered this game 16 points away from breaking the Western New York all-time scoring record with six points in the first half. Jaden Harrison now just 10 points away from becoming Western New York's crown wearer. What did you like about his game in the first? I thought he was very unselfish, and as Coach Rowe told us yesterday, he plays within the context of the team system. And uh, again, I think there will be more scoring opportunities come his way in the second half, but he plays unselfish, unselfish basketball, and as I mentioned earlier, I think he's a complete ball player, and that's what I like best about him. No one has stood out more for Bishop Timon or frankly for Canisius as well than Timon's Jacob Humphrey. The senior point guard has a game high 20 points in the first half. He had a season high 36 earlier this year against McKinley in December. This is the eighth time he scored 20 points in a game and he's still got two more quarters to play. What have you seen from number one in black? Uh, quite frankly, explosiveness. He's explosive, and even though he's listed at five foot ten, I don't know if he's that tall, Jack. Mm. He gets to the rim and finishes through contact. Very impressive. Jacob Humphrey averages 18 points a game. Boy, he's doing it all. Three trifectas for Jacob Humphrey as part of his 20 point performance in the first half. Time and up by five, 35 to 30. When you look at Canisius, their leading scope so geez, their leading scorer so far is Pat Benzer, but really Benzer hasn't been the key to the car for Canisius. No, he's just a part of the puzzle, you know, but when he gets hot, it helps their team immensely because he can stretch the defense and also get to the basket. Nick Purdy's another guy. Six points right now, but he's probably somebody that coach husband is saying. Look to be a little bit more aggressive getting to the basket. Also with Patrick Cullen, and he had seven. But both of those were somewhat quiet, I thought. Ten points for Pat Benzer, two away from his average per game. Canisius looking to clinch the Monsignor Martin Association regular season title tonight. If they are not able to defeat Timon, well, here's the scenario. If Canisius wins tonight, they are Monsignor Martin champs. If Timon defeats Canisius tonight by three points or more and Timon beats O'Hara on Monday, they still need Canisius to lose at St. Joe's on Sunday. You so, don't think St. Joe's would be elated to have that opportunity to knock off their traditional rival ooh. and knock them down in the seedings. But, you know, there's a lifetime of basketball to go here as we get to this second half with a 35-30 lead for the Tigers. Anything can happen here. I beg your pardon, I must be corrected. The game against St. Joe's on Sunday is here at Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School. St. Joe's rolls in to Canisius after losing earlier this season to the Crusaders when Canisius defeated them 56-50 at St. Joe's, that game which we saw and called on WBFO. Well, when you look to the second half, PJ, what do you think in terms of adjustments for either of these squads? Well, for Coach Jason Rowe, it's keep the tempo going. Keep the, the, the pedal on the gas right here. And for Canisius, it's try to get great shots and eliminate easy ones for the Tigers. Make them shoot the outside shots over your hands. Well, let's play a little trivia as we've got a, a few moments. Actually, no, we'll take a break as we get you set for the second half. Timon leads Canisius. We'll hold the trivia for the second half, PJ. We might Ooh, not even a, need you it. You got a good one for I me. got a good one you for think you. You think I can get it? Well, we got to take a break. This All is right. WBFO High School Basketball. It's WBFO, your home for high school sports. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, 
quick, high quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com or like us on Facebook. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Welcome back to Canisius High School. Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse for half two between number one ranked Canisius and number two time. And it is the Tigers who lead the Crusaders 35 to 30 after one half of play. Number two ranked Timon looks for revenge after a mid-season loss at home to the Crusaders. The title of the regular season of Monsignor Martin on the line tonight. And Jaden Harrison is 10 points away of breaking Western New York's scoring record in this second half for Timon. Mike Gibson to the far wing. Humphrey has it stolen away. Esposito the steal on the far sideline for Canisius. Falls in transition. Finds a cutting Purdy. Drive and a dish. Offensive foul. Nick Fisher, the setter, set his feet through the lane and took a charge on Nick Purdy. It is the second foul on Purdy. First of the quarter against the Crusaders. Another little play that Fisher does to help his ball club, giving up his body to take a charge on Nick Purdy. Five point lead for the number two ranked time in Tigers who were number one all year until they lost to Canisius earlier this season. Humphrey who has 20, finds Harrison in the short corner. He works against Purdy, drives to the middle, throwing with the right hand, it's strong. Offensive rebound, put back, a miss to the left for Harrison as well. Defensive rebound, Purdy of Canisius. There was the adjustment by Coach Rowe though getting Harrison the ball near the basket. Had two opportunities, just didn't fall. Canisius looking to get the first points of this second half. A minute gone by, McDonald straightaway three, drops. One possession game, 35-33, time and up by two. I don't know if he called bank on that one, but it counts. Mark McDonald now with seven points on the day. Time and drives with Humphrey, layup good, and the foul. Jacob Humphrey with 22. Well, it's so difficult to match up with him. Mark McDonald found himself on him on the wing, and that quickness to knife to the basket is just so hard to stop. He's on the line for an old-fashioned three-point play. Jacob Humphrey's sisters just made their way into the gymnasium back from halftime. Angel and Aaliyah Parker who both start for the Niagara Purple Eagles women's basketball team at the Division I level. All Cheektowaga, New York natives. On the far wing, Nick Purdy, after Humphrey hits the and one. 
to extend the lead up to five. Turn around Jay at the mid post for McDonald is off to the right in transition. Harrison, dish pass, finish for Humphrey. What a pass by Harrison, but Humphrey using those legs to get up the floor and beat the Crusaders to the basket. McDonald atop the key, down by seven for the Crusaders. Has it poked away by Humphrey? Esposito in front of his own bench, finds Benzer atop the key, Clark. Bounce pass to the near wing, McDonald. To the far corner, Jaden Clark gets a screen from Benzer, looks for a pass and finds Esposito up top, cuts through the lane, right-handed scoop shot good. In front of the student section wearing white and gray, Canisius gets on the board and cuts the deficit down to five. Great patience by the Crusaders there, got an easy one. Esposito's first bucket of the day, Gibson in transition for time and missed a left-handed layup, which was wide open. Defensive rebound, Benzer in transition. Purdy tried to give it back to Benzer, but missed him late out of bounds. It rolls harmlessly, time and ball up by five. Well, when everything's contested, every dribble's contested, every pass is contested, you get unforced errors like that. Jacob Humphrey, we were told by Coach Rowe, he studies the other guards dribble patterns and attacks it later in the game spinning through the lane Harrison's floater is good eight points for Jaden Harrison now eight away from history his two possessions that he's shot the ball for the Tigers were at the basket I like it Clark on the left wing hands off for Purdy down by seven Purdy and Canisius outside for Benzer Drives and kicks up top, McDonald's triple, off front iron, rebound tipped by Benzer to the near wing, corralled offensively by Clark. Jaden Clark lowers his shoulder, drives and kicks, right corner three for Esposito, sticks it. 42-38, time and up by just four as Esposito goes back to back. Johnny Esposito stepping up big for Coach Husband's Crusaders. Four and a half to go in the third quarter, Harrison, with eight on the day, picks up his dribble at the left arc, floats inside for Gibson, it tips off his hands and out of bounds. Well, a, a foul is called before the out of bounds tip as Gibson gets called for his third foul of the day. It is the first against Timon in the third quarter. Referee Jamal Carter said he hooked the defender there. That's Gibson's third. Johnny Esposito drives on the right sideline, picks up his dribble, up top Clark to the near wing, Purdy. Dribbles once and finds Benzer atop the key to the right alley. Clark in front of his bench, Kyle Husband calls the play. Clark fades away and floats inside for Benzer looking for the extra pass, but a foul is called before the 6-6 forward for Canisius could make the play. It's a defensive foul against Timon. Called against Jacob Humphrey, his second team second. Now, it will be very interesting to see if Coach Husband elects to try to put Jacob Humphrey in situations where he has to protect the basket and try to get his third and fourth and fifth foul because, wow, that would be a huge difference. Clark inbounds to Esposito. Full shot clock, Esposito finds Benzer atop the key. Three, off back iron. Rebound in the, in the air is tipped and corralled by Harris of Timon. Now Harrison, crossover move in transition, tries to break away from Clark, who reaches in and steals it. Clark, timeout called by Kyle Husband. He was upset as Clark had it and dished to the cutting Purdy, who would have had a wide open lane to lay it up through. Instead, the timeout is granted by Michael O'Brien, a 30-second timeout for the Crusaders. Friday Night Lights is presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union committed to improving the financial well-being of the community and by Miracle Method. Miracle Method refinishes ugly bathrooms and by Zoad's <coughs> Executive Transportation providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. Coach Husband a little frustrated with himself there. Thought perhaps that... Uh, Jaden Clark had nowhere to go with the basketball as he was on the floor, but he had a streaking teammate going to the basket. Coach Husband called the timeout just before that. Canisius down by four with 3.40 to go in the third quarter. Clark from his own side of the center court stripe finds Benzer to the near wing Purdy in front of Harris. He floats up top for Esposito. 
He drives and kicks to the right wing. Hayes travels as he sidestepped towards the corner in front of his head coach. 38 points for Canisius, 42 for Timon, and the Tigers get the ball back. Pace has slowed a little bit here. I think Timon wants to get it going again, get it a little frenetic. Fisher out of the game for Timon. Hicks back in. Humphrey drives through the lane, up with the right. Oh, my! Humphrey lays it in for another two. Boy, he can get to the basket. Clark tries to do the same. Instead, he drives and dishes atop the key. Purdy for Canisius, up with the left from the right side. Short defensive rebound, Hicks. Damian Johnson to his right. Humphrey drives on Benzer and draws the foul. Humphrey with 27 on the day draws the foul on Pat Benzer. That's the third against Canisius this third quarter and the second against Pat Benzer. Again, when he decides he's going to the basket, it's awfully hard to stop him. Hayes checks out for Canisius. Patrick Cullinan checks mm -hmm. in. Humphrey from the baseline inbounds for time and eyes across the floor needs to get rid of it and floats it to the near wing to Harrison crossover move on Esposito Harrison gets no room atop the key Johnson pulls a three off back iron defensive rebound Purdy of Canisius 240 to go in the third Canisius down by six spin move Esposito strong with the left offensive rebound on the put back good for Nick Purdy from the right side four point deficit for Canisius for a six-foot guard, Nick Purdy is really a force on the offensive rebounding glass. Nakai Harris comes off a double-double, which he had 12 points and 10 rebounds in the win over St. Francis on Wednesday. To the near wing, Humphrey runs and flips and got it. Jacob Humphrey with 29. Six-point lead for Timon. They really don't have a great answer for him. Purdy's running floater is strong. Defensive rebound, Hicks. Humphrey pushes to the left wing. Johnson thought about a three. Instead, finds Hicks up top to his right. Nakai Harris slows it down. Coach Rowe directs traffic, as does assistant coach Howard Washington. Atop the key, Jacob Humphrey as it poked away from him by Clark, who gives him the stare down. Out of bounds, Timon retains possession with 18 to shoot. I don't know how much I'd stare down a guy that has almost 30 points, and we're not <laughs> even into the fourth quarter, but... Humphrey inbounds to Harrison atop the key. Drives on Purdy, running floater. Foul called against Canisius as Patrick Cullinan tried to set his feet to take a charge inside the lane. It is a foul against Canisius, which sends Harrison to the stripe. Timon's been getting to the basket here this last part of this quarter, and they're getting the pace going again. Exactly what Coach Jason Rowe would like to see. First foul on the day against Patrick Cullinan. Harrison at the stripe, hits the first. Now seven away from breaking Dominic Welch's record, six away from <coughs> tying him. Timon still with a game left this season, Monday at four at home against O'Hara. Harris's second free throw is good. Jaden Harrison now with 10. Down the right wing, Esposito for Canisius, running, floater, good and one. Off the glass, he kisses it home and brings it within six. Johnny Esposito stepped up big time here, getting to the basket, making outside shots and playing great defense for the Crusaders. Canisius, seven of nine from the stripe on the day. Esposito makes it eight of 10 as he hits the and one. Give him eight on the day, equaling that of Nick Purdy. Through the lane, Humphrey draws a foul. Like a bolt of lightning, Jacob Humphrey tips it from his own baseline all the way down to our right, where he draws a shooting foul. And the foul's on Jaden Clark. That's his third foul. He's the most reasonable option for the Crusaders to contain Humphrey. Should he get into his fourth foul and beyond, obviously it's going to be a problem for Coach Husband. Humphrey's free throw, good. He's got 30 points. That's a career for a lot of high school players. Just the second time he's had 30 this season, he had 36 against McKinley in December. Jacob Humphrey, who calls Cheek to Auga, New York home, stands at the stripe as Clark has been taken out in favor of Mark McDonald. 
Humphrey hits the second. 31 for Jacob. 50 to 43, time and leads Kanisha. Stop and go move at the stripe for Cullinan as he tries to break past Humphrey, but it is Humphrey who is called for his third foul. Fourth against Timon in this quarter. A minute 21 to go in the third. Coach Rowe stands with his arms crossed and directs traffic as he pulls his right arm out of his pocket to relay the defensive call. Third on Jacob Humphrey here. Will Coach Husband go right at him? Cullinan floats inside for Purdy. Spin move on Harris. Misses around and out. Offensive rebound Purdy. Put back a miss short. Rebound caught by Harris of Timon. Whistle blows from Michael O'Brien. And a jump ball gives Canisius possession right back. Now everybody talking trash at the far baseline as Purdy and Humphrey along with Harris are all in the conversation. All seniors going at each other. Well, they've played against each other for quite a few years now. So, you know, uh, that happens. But who will be able to keep their poise greater in this kind of environment? Esposito on the stripe to inbound. Floats inside for the 6-6. Benzer, he catches, drives low and dribbles once, then rises up and misses left, but draws a foul against Jaden Harrison. That's his first personal. I thought that might be on Humphrey. That would have been disastrous for the Tigers. Pat Benzer at the stripe. Misses his first free throw on the day. He was four of four prior to that miss. To the right, Purdy heads out. Perhaps Kyle Husband wants his leader to cool down. In his place comes Clarence Funderburg. Second, a miss as well for Bunzer Short. Humphrey the rebound, watch out. Humphrey, end to end, stop and go move and he slows up on the near wing. Inside for Harrison, spin move as it poked away by Funderburg, he recovers. Three from the corner, good! Jaden Harrison! Great poise by Harrison, got the ball poked away but got himself set and made the play. Harrison with 13 is now three away from the history books. A foul is called against Timon as Nakai Harris picks up his third on the day and the fifth against Timon this quarter, which sends Canisius to the stripe. It was a mere reach-in foul that got the junior Nakai. So of the three amigos, two have three fouls. Something to manage for Coach Rowe and his staff. First free throw good for Johnny Esposito. That Brings it back within single digits. 53-44, time and leads Canisius. Second free throw from Esposito. Around and out to the right side. Rebound for Jaden Harrison of time and he slows up. A three would give him the record. To the far corner, Hicks to the near side. Humphrey looks to Harrison. Jab steps on Benzer for the record. Misses to the left. Defensive rebound, Clarence Funderburg of Canisius. Shot clock is dark to end the third quarter. Funderburg in front of his bench, drives all the way to the basket, reverse layup is short, defensive board hicks for Timon. He looks for Humphrey and gives it to him. Harrison stands in the paint with Benzer on him. Washington, the assistant coach, directing traffic to get him free. Seven to go in the quarter. Humphrey drives through the lane, crossover, step back at the left elbow. Oh, yeah! Jacob Humphrey, 33 before the fourth quarter. That was nasty right there. Great job defensively. What are you going to do when a guy can make a play like that, get you moving one way, just get a little crease and knock down the 15-footer? 55-44, time and leads Canisius after three. Stick with us for the finale. This is High School Sports on WBFO. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. 
Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Welcome back to the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School. The number two ranked Time and Tigers lead the number one ranked Canisius Crusaders 55 to 44 through three. Timon with Jaden Harrison three points away from being number one in all time. Drives the lane on Benzer, goes up with the floater strong. Defensive rebound Purdy of Canisius to the near wing McDonald. Hands off in the corner for Esposito. A jab step and a drive atop the key. Esposito still with the ball in his right hand, dishes to Clark, to the corner, Purdy, 20 to shoot, pulls the triple from the corner, off front iron, offensive rebound, tipped off the hands of Clark and stolen away by Harrison. Jaden Harrison drives through the lane, kicks atop the key, Hicks to his left, Humphrey with 33 points so far, three away from his career high. Jacob Humphrey slows it down with Coach Rowe putting the peace sign in the air. Up top, Nakai Harris working with three <laughs> fouls against him. To the right side, Humphrey, a foul is called away from the play before Aaron Hicks could pull the three from atop the key. It is the first foul called against Mark McDonald of Canisius. Check that, his second personal foul, but the first against the Crusaders in this fourth quarter. 7.05 to go in the fourth, 11-point lead for Timon. The number two ranked Tigers have the ball at the baseline. A no-look inbound from Humphrey for Harris to the near wing. Harrison guarded by Benzer, three away from number one all time. Harris has it stolen away on the pass. Benzer, boom! Benzer takes a spill after throwing it down, cutting the deficit down to nine. Maybe that momentum play will get this Crusaders team going. Harrison thought about a step back three on McDonald, instead slows it down. Up by nine, Jaden Harrison, the West Seneca native, drives and kicks to the corner. Three for Harris, an air ball into the middle of the lane, caught by Esposito of Canisius. The Crusaders student section lets him hear about it as Purdy drives baseline, kick to the near wing, three from the corner, good! Mark McDonald, his second three on the day, brings it within six and forces a time and timeout. 6.15 to go on the fourth, 55-49, time and up by two possessions. 11 becomes six very quickly here. Coach Jason Rowe said he's seen enough. He wants to settle his team down now. Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. You know, the thing about Canisius is, we've said it all along, they don't get rattled. They don't get off their game. Right back in it now. Let's see what happens out of this timeout. Again, I said before, they're playing chess here. Coach Jason Rowe might have something to get either Humphrey or Harrison the ball in a good spot. Might Coach Husband change defense just a little bit here? Let's see. Pat Benzer with a Canisius high 12 points on the game. Just one Crusader with foul trouble. Jaden Clark has three against him. But for the time in Tigers, Jacob Humphrey has three against him, as does Nakai Harris and Mike Gibson. Jaden yep. Harrison with just one foul against him is still just three points away from passing Dominic Welch on the all-time Western New York scoring list. This in front of a sold out crowd at Canisius High School's Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse. Time and ball from the baseline will inbound with Aaron Hicks. He's got Humphrey two feet to his right. The red shoes of Aaron Hicks walk across the floor as he receives the give and go pass from Humphrey. Full court trap for Canisius, sags away, then it pokes away off the hands of Hicks, it's stolen away. Jaden Clark scoops up the loose ball just as Hicks crossed the timeline. On the far wing, Esposito crosses up on Harris, dances to the middle and swings away from Hicks, drives and lays it up with a foul. Called on Timon, Esposito goes to the stripe. That's Jacob Humphrey's fourth foul right there. Critical time right here in this ball game. And we saw the chess match give that one to Coach Husband. Changing his defense yielded a turnover. And the first free throw good for Johnny Esposito. The number one ranked Crusaders now down by five as Gibson comes 
back in the game for Timon to replace Aaron Hicks. Gibson from King Center Charter School playing with four, or ra rather three fouls thus far. Second free throw also good for Esposito. 11 points for Johnny Esposito. Four point lead for Timon. Near wing Humphrey, across the floor. Harris down low, waits and lays it in with the right from the right side. Got his defender to jump, a steal off the inbound and a layup for Johnson is strong. Offensive rebound, Humphrey put back good through contact. No foul, but Humphrey's got 35. Here's the spurt ability of the Tigers. Eight point lead for Timon. Purdy for Canisius. Dishes inside, fade away, one handed jumper. Good for Mark McDonald on the right mid post. He's got 12. McDonald with a tough shot there that was needed with five minutes and change to go. 59 53. Timon still up top. Three for Harrison. The record is his. Jaden Harrison atop the all time scoring list. Timon Sr. with 16 on the day breaks Dominic Welch's all-time scoring record with 2,377 points. Wow. And look at the young man. He's trying to deflect the, the attention. The team on the floor as timeout was called. Coach Rowe with a plaque, looks like a big time check that they would hand out at a banquet. Instead, it has Jaden Harrison's name, Bishop Time in St. Jude, Western New York all time scoring record with that number, 2,377, as Harrison climbs over Dominic Welch and the record that was set seven years ago. Harrison, throughout his five years of time at West Seneca East, and Bishop Timon has etched his name into the history books for a lifetime. The whole crowd at a sellout, Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse on their feet to honor one of Western New York's all-time best. And what a class act. I just love the, the unselfish and humble nature the young man has. And he want to get on with the ball game. And we got one heck of a game with 5.03 to go. Nine point Tiger lead he gives his team and he's telling his guys refocus now, refocus. Boy, I like a lot of the things he does out there. Friday Night Lights is presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating and backup power on WBFO and WNY Athletics. This joint presentation of Friday Night Lights put together for you. Jack Cruiser and PJ Colley with you for the final five minutes from Canisius High School. Back underway, Canisius ball. Atop the key, Jaden Clark gets a screen from McDonald. Drives right of the lane to the basket over Gibson. He floats it up, strong off the iron. Offensive rebound controlled by Esposito on the far wing. Up top, Benzer's triple. Off front iron in the lane. It's corralled by Gibson. He rips it away from his own teammates and then lost it off of Purdy's hands, but re-corralled. Humphrey in transition. Up with the right from the left side. A new career high for Jacob Humphrey. 37 for the Cheek Dewaga native and a defensive rebound for Harrison on the missed layup from Jaden Clark. Three in transition, Humphrey misses to the left. Canisius wants to slow the pace down with Clark with four minutes to go in the fourth. Left corner three for Esposito, sticks it as well. Johnny Esposito's got 14. Timon still leads Canisius 64-56. After all that commotion, there's still four minutes to play. Jason Rowe wasn't happy with that last shot, and it got a run out for Canisius, and Johnny Esposito made him pay with a three. 64-56, number two ranked Timon over number one ranked Canisius with 3.45 to play in the fourth. Nakai Harris atop the key to the record setter, Jaden Harrison. Step back three from the left. You betcha! Jaden Harrison drills it. 11 point lead, Tigers. Getting that record done seems to have energized him and relaxed him. Looks like he's in complete control. The time and student section traveled well. They all jeer as a travel is called on a double dribble against Pat Benzer and Canisius.
Three minutes and 21 seconds to go. Now it's about execution if you're the Tigers. You've played so hard and, and earned this lead here. Now you gotta finish the ball game. Canisius, on the other hand, may have to take a little bit of a couple chances here on defense. Difficult to do against the Tigers. Substitution for Canisius as Patrick Cullinan comes back onto the floor to replace Mark McDonald. Atop the key, time and controls up by 11. Harris, step back on the left wing. The son of Syracuse, former Orangeman Paul, floats it inside. A miss layup from the right side for Gibson. Gets his own miss. Put back through contact. The hoop, the harm. Mike Gibson on the board with his first points of the day. 69-56 time and a chance at one more. Mike Gibson was the first guy the coaching staff alluded to. A glue guy, a worker, gets a well-earned chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. 6-2 junior from King Center Charter School with the bald head, wipes his hands on his black shorts. Mike Gibson at the stripe dribbles twice in front of his white and black shoes, releases high with his right around and out to the left. Defensive board, Purdy of Canisius. He sprints through the middle of the lane. Kick to the corner. Clark dribbles up top Esposito. Back to Clark on the wing. He drives, floats it up, and got it to go off the glass. A little English from Jaden Clark, and Canisius brings it within 11. First field goal on the day for Jaden Clark. Playing with three fouls against him. He's just got three points. Jaden Harrison slowly dribbles at center court, looks to his left where head coach Jason Rowe in his seventh season calls for a timeout. We will take a 30-second break as Timon calls for it. 2.27 to go in the fourth. It's a 69-56 Timon lead over Canisius. Stick with us on WBFO for the conclusion from Canisius High School right after this. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream, Learn more at ComfortPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. Yeah. I thought it was a chintzy one, but. Yeah. But. How much time, Prince? Welcome back to Canisius High School, 69-58. Number two ranked Timon leads number one ranked Canisius, 227 to go in the fourth quarter. Jack Cruiser and P.J. Cauley with you for Friday Night Lights on WBFO and WNY Athletics. This joint presentation is presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. Time and ball, right of their own bench. Coach Jason Rowe has his hands in his pockets as Timon slows it down. Now Coach Rowe puts two fingers in the ear and stoically relays the offensive play call. Jacob Humphrey with 37 points. To the left, three for Harrison, around and out, defensive rebound, Benzer. Two minutes to go in the fourth, down by 11, three from the corner for Cullen and his short defensive rebound, Humphrey, and he is fouled as he drove down the near sideline. Cullen and reached around behind him. It is against Patrick Cullen, and that is his third personal. But check that, second personal foul against Patrick Cullen, and team's third foul in this fourth quarter. 2.05 to go in the fourth. Jaden Clark and Jacob Humphrey jaw at each other as Humphrey will inbound in front of us for Timon. He lobs it in for Jaden Harrison, who rips it over the head of Nick Purdy. Harrison, who already set the New York, a Western New York scoring record earlier this game, hands it off for Gibson across the timeline. Johnson nearly thought he had Cullen in on skates, instead gives it up for Harris. Drives down the left of the lane, up through contact, no foul, it's short, rebound on the floor, corralled by Esposito. Dribble alive, up the floor, Cullen in, low post, stopped his dribble and found Benzer. In the corner, 95 seconds to go, down by 11, Esposito pulls a three, off to the right, defensive rebound, Jaden Harrison. Timons, senior, slows it down. Great basketball IQ by Harrison as well. Getting a rebound, saying, let's relax, guys. Finish this ball game. Harrison, no look time to Gibson through the lane. Who finishes? Mike Gibson, four points, 71-58 time and leads. 
A minute to go in the corner. Benzer's triple swish. Timeout Canisius with a minute two. Still to play in the fourth and a 10 point game. Now Canisius has two fouls till they, or they have to commit two fouls before they put uh, Timon on the line here. Be interesting to see what uh, strategy Coach Husband employs here. This is where the change in the rules, Jack, that mm. we used to have the one and one becomes a difference because after that, or on that fifth flower and beyond, it will be two shots. Whereas last year, you had to get to seven just to have one and one. One and one. I always think it's a much different mentality for a free throw shooter when you're shooting one and one as opposed to knowing you have two, two mm. shots. A little more pressure on the first shot. Well, Friday Night Lights is supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union, committed to improving the financial well-being of the community and by Miracle Method. Miracle Method refinishes ugly bathrooms and by Zolad's Executive Transportation, providing limo service for the Buffalo Niagara region and by Brighton Liquor and Wine, 930 Brighton Road in Tonawanda. Friday Night Lights, a joint presentation of Buffalo Toronto Public Media Sports and Western New York Athletics. I just want to mention, I think... Jamal Carter and Michael Bryan, the two officials tonight, have done a really good job of keeping these guys under control in a heated environment and a heated basketball game. The sellout crowd starting to filter out as some Canisius fans head to the exits, but we all witnessed history tonight at the Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse at Canisius High School as Timon inbounds from their own baseline cross-court pass from Harrison caught Humphrey pump fakes drives around Clark no look dish to the wing and Timon slows it down again double team comes way out Harrison drives or check that Humphrey drove through the lane and drew the foul against Alex Hayes of Canisius that is his second and the team's fourth one more foul against Canisius will send time into the stripe Time and up 71-61 with 46 seconds to play. Humphrey inbounds to the record setter, Jaden Harrison. Guarded tightly by Esposito, and the foul is called. Michael O'Brien blows the whistle at center court to signal for Johnny Esposito's foul, which is his first and the team's fifth. That sends Jaden Harrison to the free throw line. And that was one that uh, Johnny Esposito intended to commit to stop the clock here. The only choice the Crusaders have. Unfortunately, you got the leading scorer all time in West New York history at the <laughs> line. Harrison hits the first. <laughs> 20 points for Jaden Harrison for the 12th time this season, and the student section is bowing as Harrison continues a perfect day from the free throw line. He is six of six, 12 point lead for Timon, and a loose ball goes out of bounds off the hands of Patrick Cullen and out of bounds. Timon's gonna have a fun weekend, don't you think? <laughs> well, they've earned it, and uh, Coach Rose said those games they lost earlier in the year have galvanized them and made them better. They look awfully good tonight. Winners of seven straight, Timon, is just 37 seconds away from being the first team in Western New York to defeat Canisius all season. Jaden Harrison catches the inbound pass from Humphrey, still with it, finds a cutter in Harris at the baseline. Just two seconds different shot and game clock. Time and up by 12. Harrison gets fouled at the center court stripe. I'll tell you what, those Time and Tiger fans, they've got a, you know, you're a music guy. They got pretty good <laughs> tone over there. You know, they sang the national anthem. Mm -hmm. They've got several different uh, songs going on over there. Very good tone. I I'll argue with their tempo. They sped up the anthem a little they bit. They need and work. <laughs> they need work, but you got to like the effort. Absolutely. Jaden Harrison at the free throw line. Good again. Give him 22 on the day. Just so composed. I mean, think of the pressure that the young man's under. Everybody in Western New York is looking at him, and he just stayed within himself and did what it took for his team to come out on top. Just love his poise. 23 points on a record-setting day for Jaden Harrison as he goes perfect from the stripe. Benzer's right corner three is short. Defensive rebound, Benz, uh, Gibson rather of Timon, and the Tigers will walk it out. 
75-61. The number two ranked Timon Tigers knock off number one Canisius on their home floor. Timon on a career day for Jaden Harrison and Jacob Humphrey claim the victory. 75-61 the Good final. Game. We will Good be game. back for our post-game recap with Coach Jason Rowe and the record setter, Jaden Harrison. We might potentially get Jacob Humphrey as well. Stick with us for the post-game show once more. Final score, Timon 75, Canisius 61. Stick with us for more Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power after this on WBFO. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ComfortLessons.com or link us on Facebook. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. to WBFO's Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. We are joined by the Timon Tigers head coach, Jason Rowe, as Timon defeats Canisius 75-61, to not only with head coach Jason Rowe, but with one half of our players of the game. Tough to have 37 and not be the player of the game, Jacob Humphrey. First and foremost, congratulations, gentlemen, on the victory. Thank First you. teams in Western New York to defeat Canisius this season. Jacob, what a performance, 37 points. What are you feeling? Feel good, you know. Feels really good to get a game on Canisius in the regular season. That's my first one in my whole career. So, milestone for me, but on to the next game, on to focusing for the championship. You were able no, to you, get you to can, the basket. You, you can enjoy this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but you can enjoy this one. You played a great game. You can enjoy this one, right? You, you know the rule. You got 24 hours. I'm proud of you. All right? <laughs> That's awesome. That's a, You got a great mentor right here, and what a point guard he was. <laughs> but you were able to get to the basket all game. Do you feel like you had chances to go because they were looking at, at Jaden a little bit, and you had, you had angles, and you were able to get there? Of course. You know, Jaden was 16 away from breaking the all-time record so they were obviously very focused on him you know it was up to us to take advantage of that as much as we could you know of course he'll score whenever he can but it's our job as well to get the open spots do whatever we can to help win the game and you had some contributions from some other guys that we talked about big mike did a good job on the boards you got the three amigos but you got the glue guys as well it's yeah. got to feel great oh, coach. it feels awesome um you know those guys every it's, it's next man up everybody knows that 
Not sure when your name or number is called, but just be ready when it is. Mike had a huge three-pointer. I mean, a huge three-point play. Jacob led us. Jaden got hot when it was necessary. Nakai played great defense. Nick Fisher gave us great minutes. Aaron Hicks, Damon, jo Damian Johnson. I mean, we it was it was awesome. It was a great, great, great team win tonight. And Coach, we, we Coach got Rowe. another we got another guest here. I'm gonna give him my headset. All right, sounds good, PJ. Uh, Coach Rowe, when you've got Jacob Humphrey playing the game that he was playing with four fouls against him, did you have any thought to take him out of the game? No, no, I trust him, um, and he knows that. We've been the team knows that. I trust all my guys. You know, we. we this is our third year playing together. It's not like he hasn't been in this situation before. Um, you know, we just told him to just be a little less aggressive. Hmm. Um, and he was fine. He was fine. He made smart plays down at, down at the end. Attack when it was necessary. Got people involved. A great game. Great game. Jacob, last thing for you. 37 points on the day. A lot of them moving on your way to the rim. Where do you get your craftiness and ability to finish at the rack? You know, I'm not going to lie. I studied a lot of film on my own coach. <laughs> Watched a lot of this. Stole a couple moves out of his bag, you know. But, you know, watching basketball my whole life, knowing the gaps to attack, knowing when to do what, you know, just overall, I'm honestly overwhelmed at the moment about the game I had. So. <laughs> just a little I, 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 I might add for him, though. Sure. He won't say it, I will. It was a career high for him tonight. Career high, right? Yeah. 37 career high, Friday night, big lights. He's it was great. I'm proud of you, man. I'm going to keep telling you that. I'm proud of you. Thank Love you. you. Love you Jacob, I lied. Last question for you. <laughs> what is it like playing with Jaden Harrison, Western New York's all-time leading scorer? It's been a great experience. We came together as, a, as sophomores. You know, we've had a long journey together from losing the championship our first year, winning the championship our second year, chasing our second championship together right now, especially as seniors. So nothing we can't handle. I love him. I'm proud of him. So Glad proud too, of bro. him. Glad you too. We're joined by Jaden Harrison, co-player of the game. Can't not recognize both players for the Time and Tigers who defeat Kanisha 75 to 61. Jaden, congratulations. And what's going through your head? Oh, man, I'm just happy we got the win. That was, that was the emphasis uh, coming into the game, get the win. And uh, we came out on top, so I'm more than happy for, with the results. It seemed as though you were extremely poised in the moment and just wanted the game to continue. Is that fair to say? Yeah, man, that's what, uh, it's, it's hard, man. It's hard, uh, you know, with a big record like that that uh, haven't been done in a while. But I just really wanted to get the, I really to get the win. That was the main focus. So, I think, I, I, yeah, I think the it. best part of when he scored and everyone celebrating, he was pointing at his head and talking about let's stay focused, win the game. Mm -hmm. um, proud of you, baby. Boys. Jaden, when you think back to your days as an eighth grader at West Seneca East, what would you like to tell that young kid right now? I tell him, keep going, kid. You're going to be special. <laughs> keep going, kid. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> coach, when you talk about Jaden Harrison for decades to come, about yes. the player that he was to coach and the person that he is off the basketball yeah. floor, what would you say? Leader. Leader. Um, coming into the game, again, our lives were on him. And what was impressive to me is that he didn't press the issue. He wasn't trying to break the record. He was trying to get a, a, a victory, mm. right? And it's easy to sit there knowing that you have history, you know, running down your back right now to sit there and press the issue. And I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go. But he let it happen. As you can see, I think it was the fourth quarter when it happened or late in the third, fourth. Mm. You know what I mean? And that says a lot about his leadership. Jacob was hot. He he started calling plays for Jacob, <laughs> I, you know, seriously. And I let it I let it happen because, again, I trust these guys. But, again, it, 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 it's incredible, his leadership and how much more mature he is from when he first started. And it wasn't a bad mature, but it's a big difference between when you're a sophomore and you're a senior. And he's showing senior leadership for sure. Jaden, last question for you because I know you're dying to talk about somebody other than yourself in this moment. Talk about Jacob Humphrey and what he means to this team. What is it like to play with him as a teammate? Oh, man, it's been a great experience. But, uh that's, that's, that's my brother, man, and he know that. That's my brother. Uh, seeing him shine on the big stage like this, and I'm just proud of him. The, the intensity he brings for us, the energy he brings for us, he's our energizer. So being able to – seeing him be able to do that in the bright lights, and I know he's proud of himself, and I'm proud of him more than he is of himself. And we, I love you, boy. I love you, man. Way to go, guys. All right, that's our head coach from the Time and Tigers, Jason Rowe. Currently ranked number two. We'll see what happens in the new polls in Western New York. Time and defeats Canisius 75 to 61. Co players of the game, Jaden Harrison and Jacob Humphrey. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we will wrap things up on WBFO Friday Night Lights and WNY Athletics as we have just witnessed history from Canisius High School. Once more, final score Timon 75, 
Canisius 61. Jacob Humphrey ends the day with a career-high 37 points. Jaden Harrison, uh, Harrison ends with 23 and being etched as the all-time leading scorer in Western New York history. PJ, I mean, what a night it was, not only for the Time and Tigers at a team and for Jaden Harrison individually, but overall for all of Western New York basketball. Oh, it's a wonderful thing for Western New York basketball. But, you know, Time and talk to us about the brotherhood and you can see it they don't just talk to talk they walk that walk these guys are connected and they're dangerous and it's very obvious isn't it time and will have one more game to play on monday at 4 p.m as they host cardinal o'hara and for the canisius crusaders they will be here against st joe's for the monsignor martin finale wow. at Bernard J. Kennedy Fieldhouse. Now because time in one by three or more points, if Canisius loses to St. Joe's on Sunday, which that game will be on WNY Athletics at 1.30 p.m., if St. Joe's upsets Canisius and time and defeats O'Hara, the Tigers will be the regular season champs for the back-to-back -back seasons. Well, Coach Husband uh, just took his team into the locker room, and they're going to be uh, ready for that ball game. But St. Joe's, that would mean everything for them to knock off Canisius in this kind of situation. Well, we thank you for joining us on WNY Athletics and WBFO. For our entire crew, Haley Hellenbrook, our studio engineer, Morgan Koziel, our broadcast engineer, Bill Sauer, the vice president of corporate support, and Tom Calderon, the president and CEO of Buffalo Toronto Public Media. For Western New York Athletics crew, Francis Beck, our live stream producer, Russ Battaglia, and Dana Gunther, our camera operators, Frank Wolf, the CEO and founder of WNY Athletics. This is Jack Cruiser on behalf of PJ Cauley saying thanks for joining us. Till next week, I bid you adieu.